everyone today i'm going to show you how to create this really simple but cinematic text animation in after effects let's get started my name is cameron with motion science and for today's lesson i was inspired by this post i found on behance and i thought this would be really cool to recreate in a unique way to use for a jfk project that we're working on here at motion science so here we are in After Effects in the 1920 by 1080 comp. We've got a background solid here. A basic rule of thumb that I always follow is I don't like to use straight up black when possible. I like to use a background solid that's got a little bit of color to it. So if we go to layer solid settings and click on it, you can see it's just sitting up here just above black, right? It just adds a little bit of color. That's the first thing. Next thing we have here is a flag. And this is just a stylized asset found online. And we've got a couple of effects applied to it. We've got a Gaussian blur and a tent. Uh, Gaussian blurs on to just, you know, make it not so crisp and make it a little bit more organic. And then the tents on here just to make it black and white. Pretty simple. Above this, we have a fractal layer that we have set up. And this just has fractal noise applied and Gaussian blur as well. So if I turn that Gaussian blur off, it's very, very subtle. You can see off. On. It just softens up the edges. Again, it's another trick to make things look more organic. For the fractal noise, we've kind of played around with a few of the settings. The contrast is bumped up. The brightness is dropped down. We've turned the complexity down to 1.3. We've turned the scale width to 87, the scale height to 29. None of these settings have to be exact. This is just kind of what's played around with and got these nice little settings. And then we set some keyframes here for evolution. You can see we have a two second comp here and the evolution's making the blocks look like they're kind of fading in and out. Now, we also have the fractal noise kind of fading back, and that is because the fractal noise is parented to the flag, and if I hit S for scale on the flag, you can see we have a keyframe set at 30%, and then it drops down to 26%. So this is just to create some nice cinematic motion, just like the flag kind of dropping back. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go here to track mat and we're going to select the fractal layer. We don't need to see the fractal layer, it's turned off. We'll select that and you can see now the flag is being shown through the fractal layer. It's really simple. I can tell it's it's got stars and stripes, it's fading back. Okay, that's interesting. If you're eager to create motion design that's gritty, atmospheric and cinematic, like the example I'm showing you, I invite you to explore the motion science membership at www.motionscience.tv slash mastery. Inside this membership, you're gonna find hundreds of projects just like this one, including the project files, and they can help you elevate your motion design to develop a very striking cinematic style through our trainings, our techniques, and our supportive community. So I definitely invite you to check it out. Now let's go back to the training. So moving on to the next composition here, we've got our three layers from the previous comp, and we've got some type. And this is just a simple typeface of JFK is Apotec Black, and then Declassified is Apotec Extra Light. And that is just creating some contrast between JFK and Declassified. Just gives us some visual interest, again, to separate the two words. You know, they're very close together. Now, we have here some interesting text animation happening, right? And this is what was really inspiring to me from the previous example I showed you from Behance. So I'll show you what we did here by duplicating this layer. And I'll just go into the layer here, into the text layer and delete these two animators we've applied. And so we've just got some basic text here. Now, what we did is we started with some basic animation presets. So we did animation apply animation preset. And under tracking, we started with a spasm preset. And you can see this is what it does, right? It just kind of creates this spasm effect. And we went into the animator and we adjusted the wiggly selector. And we also applied a second animator here of tracking. So we have animator one, which is spasm and animator two tracking. Now I'm gonna go ahead and delete this layer, go back into our original text layer here, open this up and just kind of show you, we played around with the max amount and the minimum amount we dropped the wiggle per second down to two from six. We dropped the correlation down. We played a little bit around with the spatial phase. We set the tracking type to be four, the tracking amount to negative 20. And also with the tracking animator, animator two, we cranked the end amount down to 10% and animated the offset and set the tracking amount to 62. 
And that's pretty much all we did. We just have these two animators and added some keyframes here. I'll hit U to reveal those keyframes. And we also added a position, just a position keyframe here to kind of slide everything from left to right. And if we watch this play back, this is what it looks like, right? Two simple text animators to have that text kind of just crumple in on itself and it looks interesting, but we can take this a step further. And we're gonna do that by adding an adjustment layer over the top. And we've added a posterized time effect to this set to a frame rate of 12. Now when I play that back, you can see all of a sudden now it's very steppy and it looks even more epic, right? Also, if you look at the flag behind here, if I turn the text off, the flag is also utilizing the posterized effect time sitting over the top of it. So if I turn off posterized time, this is the original. It's just a lot more smooth and back on, it just makes it a little bit more steppy, right? So we'll turn that text back on as well. And it's looking pretty cool at this point. Now we can add another adjustment layer over the top of the text. And to this, we've added grain. And you may be able to see this, you may not. But there's a lot of grain just kind of throughout. And this is why we added a background solid to this composition. If the background solid wasn't here, the grain wouldn't be sitting over this blackness. It would just be sitting over the white text and the flag sitting in the middle. So because there's a solid here, the grain has something to sit over the top of. And you can see in our grain settings, we've just decreased the intensity to 0.8 and we're using the Kodak Vision 200T. Now to finish this animation off, what we did is we went into our next comp here and we added a Venetian blinds effect with a small transition completion of 3%, a width of four and a feather of 0.5. And I'm gonna turn this on and it is very, very subtle. You can see it here in the characters. I turn it off, that's without, and that's on. Without and on, very, very simple effect, but it just adds a little bit of that extra subtle detail that if our eyes don't immediately notice it, that's good, right? This is just taking it up a notch. And the very last thing we added was color, and a color adjustment layer of the top, Lumetri color. I'm gonna turn that on, and you can see it just took everything into more of a greenish gray world. This is straight up black, white, and gray values. This is more of greenish gray values and greenish white values. And it's just that little extra something to make it look interesting. And the only thing we did for Lumetri Color is under Creative, we applied a look of a Kodak 5205 Fuji 3510. And there you go, we have a really cool, very simple cinematic text animation for JFK Declassified. I hope you enjoyed this training. I will see you in the next one.